So obviously right now is kind of a trying time in our country. Uh, gas prices are completely through the roof and you might be looking at a truck and wondering what kind of truck gets what kind of gas mileage in the real world. Uh, of course they're going to advertise that they get one thing or another, but let's be honest, those are all way over exaggerated and uh, don't expect to get what it says on the sticker. Um, but so I'm going to show you today what kind of gas mileage you actually get with a lifted Toyota Tundra. I run through all the specs on my truck, what all I have done to it, uh, very, very minimal, minimal things done to it. Um, but you get to kind of see in the real world what kind of gas mileage you're going to be getting with one of these big full-time V8 trucks. This one's a 5.7 liter V8 and Toyota is known for being just a truck that's horrible on fuel mileage. It's only a six-speed transmission as opposed to, I believe Dodge, Chevy, and Ford all are going with a 10-speed now. Um, but this is a 2015 truck. Uh, this is not the brand new model. They do have that V6 that came out now that I believe is going to be a lot more equivalent to the Ford EcoBoost. But again, don't look at the sticker value for what the NPG is because in the real world, that is not what you're ever going to see. Um, but let's get right into the video. All right, so here is the truck in question. It has a 4-inch Fabtech lift as well as the 305 65 R18s. I believe that is about a 34 by 10 and a half by 18, or by 18 meaning with an 18-inch rim. It's an 18 by 9 rim with a zero offset. Uh, these are, I believe it's a fuel hostage um, but then just regular TSS off-road package comes with these little side steps. Um, it does have like a TRD Pro grill, but none of this affects the weight. Um, really that lift and tires is going to be most of what is actually affecting any of the gas mileage or any of the performance uh, that we're getting out of this truck. Um, when I did install this lift, they made me put a little sticker in my door sill that says that it reduces the towing capacity by i believe it's 180 pounds something that doesn't really i mean if i'm going to be towing i'm not going to generally be towing overweight uh, we do have this jeep now that kind of pushes me close but um unless i'm just on a huge trailer um, it distributes it pretty well but um, yeah, so this is the actual truck itself. It's that V8, um, it's flex fuel, but I don't use the E85 hardly ever. Um, I'm running uh, E87. All right, now this is gonna be the last video I have of this truck in its condition right now. I'm not doing anything big though. I'm just trading out these tires. And if you take a close look, you'll see exactly why uh, they have been, I had them to wear they were good to go, and then I went on like three or four road trips and just ate through them. So um, we're going to be trading out these tires, but first I'm going to get you a little review of what I thought of these. Now, if you follow the channel for a while, you see, you've seen that I used to have Cooper STT Pros on this thing. Uh, they were a little bit taller, a little bit wider, but still on that same 18 inch rim. Uh, but I'll throw up a picture of what it used to look like. And then, of course, the picture of it in the mud. I loved that picture. Uh, but the reason I bought those specific tires were they were a little bit cheaper. They had really great reviews and were supposed to last me a good 45,000 miles. Um, so then I found out that my lift is for the wrong truck. Um, I have a TRD Pro. And if you look online, it says that this lift is for any trim but the TRD Pro. And so the guy that installed it just ignored that. And anyway, that's a whole different story that I would love to get into if anybody would love to hear that story. But um, anyway, so the lift that's on my truck is not designed for my truck. So um, I am not able to get these tires in alignment. And so I burned through the first set of Coopers in 24,000 miles. And these ate through in roughly 44. I, let me think. I took them off at 68, and I'm now at 110. So it was 42,000 miles, and these are pretty well done. Um, 
on the outsides we're not at that ridge yet where um, the tire marker is but you can see try and find another one in the middle maybe it doesn't have tire indicator marks but the treads are starting to connect like here but um i don't know maybe it doesn't have the as good a tire indicator marks but i mean you can tell that that's pretty well gone there's one and we are uh, at it if not a little bit past it probably a little bit past it but um yeah so these tires are pretty much toast after forty-two thousand miles um one thing that changed a lot between the coopers and the nittos these are those ridge grapplers which is a little bit less aggressive tire and the reason i did that is i used to be on a super muddy like just stupid wet uh duck lease and thankfully we got out of that the truck is very thankful for it um but so most of these um most of these miles were just highway it's my daily driver of course so it's to and from school to and from work but a lot of it was towing um probably let me think it's probably 10,000 miles of towing out of those 40 maybe a little bit less but i've had that jeep i've had four wheelers motorcycles you name it it's been on this boats um but i mean this thing's really been through it and these tires absolutely love them uh they rode super well even if i rode right now i'll show you a sound clip of um these tires on the road right now and they are not silent but a world of difference between the coopers that's the only thing i really have it to compare it to now i'll get over on this side a little bit and just kind of show you um this tread pattern a little bit better with a little bit less harsh light uh, you can see i've also had a few plugs in these that's one thing the coopers had a big enough lug that usually the nail would stop in the lug this one they've kind of worked their way through especially actually i take that back the first weekend i had these tires i had a huge nail in them um i was driving down to texas and just right up in one of the lugs and immediately had to get this things patched um that was a pain but um yeah so i've had these for two and a half years that's i mean forty thousand miles in two and a half years that's not terrible but um i didn't see any noticeable benefit in gas mileage these are a little bit uh, they're a little bit shorter a little bit narrower than what i had before but they are also i believe a little bit heavier because there's just so much more tread patches and um so i didn't notice a difference in gas mileage between the two um i used to get probably 12 miles a gallon and now i'm getting like 11.7 on average um but the gas is kind of here and there so um i don't know if it's truly a fair comparison but i mean overall it's been a great great tire uh very quiet on the interstate um but i went with this less aggressive tread pattern because like i said i was no longer needing it for the deep mud like i had originally um had to do for that duck lease uh, we ended up buying our own land and now we're on gravel roads and i mean a stock stock bmw has been through there so we're not super worried about it um but i did want to keep this aggressive look um uh, of these ridge grapplers and that's one thing i love even though it's not an aggressive tire itself the sidewall just looks aggressive and it's a very decently performing tire uh of course i do still i did work at an off-road park and so this thing did see a little bit of mud with these tires and i will say it was a lot more fish taily than with the coopers the coopers would immediately dig down these of course had a lot more tread on them um and a lot less deep tread and so you could i could feel it spinning but i've never gotten an instance where i was stuck but the Coopers made it through some deep stuff that I wouldn't have even tried with this. Uh, so definitely you notice, absolutely notice the um, difference off-road. But one thing I found that was a little bit surprising 
is these in the rain, especially on like hills and stuff, they slip. They slip a lot. Um, so I did move to Fayetteville since the Coopers. And so that of course was a, at least a little bit of a factor because everything, it rains so much more up here and it's hilly and everything else. And so I found that if I was on any sort of angle in the rain, um, I was gonna be slipping. Even if I was just barely on the gas, I found my, myself slipping more and more. Um, if I ever turned traction control off, I would slip everywhere. Same thing with the ice. Uh, we, I will say we did have a lot more ice uh, time with these Nittos than with the Coopers, but the Nittos, I actually did end up getting into a wreck. Um, when we had the ice storm, uh, the back end just came out from underneath me, uh, going around a corner and I hit a stop sign and um, had to file had to file that under insurance because it ended up being about $8,000 worth in damage to my bed. Um, I'll throw up a picture of that as well. But definitely a good tire, but I will say compared to a true mud terrain, um, they don't do near as well in muddy environments and they obviously don't do as well in snow and ice and even rain, which surprised me. Uh, but so here's, for comparison, this is a true mud tire on this Jeep. And you can just see it's a lot more spacing between the threat, between the lugs. And even this one has good rain siping. Siping, siphoning. But uh, like, look how deep that little rain spot is. And that's so when you're driving over water, um, it's able to push, instead of it being on a flat surface where uh, you're more likely to hydroplane, it gives the water an out. It gives it somewhere to go that's not just sitting right on top of that lug. And uh, that's one thing that the Ridge Grapplers didn't have near as much of. Like they've got these little things, but they just were not very deep, even in the middle. I'll go to one with a little bit more tread. Even in the middle, it was just super narrow and so I found myself hydroplaning a little bit more with these than on a true mud tire. Um, these are mud claws and um, they're not as nice as the Coopers I originally had, but um, these are also a little bit taller, a little bit wider than I used to have, but it's just my closest comparison. These are the only uh, three sets of tires I've ever owned. I had a set of um, KO2s, but when I got them, they had 35,000 miles on them and so they were pretty much toast uh i ended up squeezing 44 out of them but i mean to tell you we were about to see wire on those but so we had the ko2s that lasted 44,000. we had the coopers that lasted about 22 24 and now 42 and so overall the ko2s have gotten the best um tread life out of them but it's also my dad drove my dad used to drive this thing and um now it's me so it's a different driver a lot different conditions um a lot more towing with me um than he ever did so definitely difference in driver could easily uh have shortened it by that 2000 miles but i was impressed to even get 44 out of these after getting 28 out of the first set i that was Exp that was an expensive turnaround time, um, especially coming out of high school. But um, yeah, so these are my overall review of these tires. Uh, not a true mud tire. Um, it, and they'll tell you that too. Not a true mud tire. Uh, I saw some definite fallbacks in the off-roading circumstances, in the snow and ice, in the water and but especially in muddy circumstances where this tire did stand out though is on road handling uh, in normal conditions in tread life and in overall comfort of the vehicle um, when the cooper started wearing the uh, truck would get rough if the uh, more worn tires were in the back instead of the front because uh, they were wearing so uneven because of that lift kit uh, that it just ate through them. 
and it made the ride really rough, especially at lower speeds. I did not see that at all with these. Uh, they wore pretty true, even with the alignment issues. Um, I'm sure there's a little bit more wear on the inside, but uh, yeah, there's a little bit more wear on the inside than the outside, but not terrible. We've kept these things rotated every 3,000 miles. Um, I think the worst that we got is like 5,000 miles out of a rotation, um, but stayed on it with the rotations and it did, it paid off, I will say. We're gonna start this off with the full tank get this trip on the road all right now so far on this trip we are averaging 14.4 but i will reset that now and we have that's not right but um it's usually around 296 as soon as that kicks on um i'll see where it's at i'm also going to reset trip a and get this thing rolling see what we're going to do now this won't affect it just a ton, but at least during most of this trip, I'm not gonna be running AC. Uh, it's a little warm, but I'm just gonna have the front windows down. I'm gonna have that back window crack just like this. Let's see. Best part about a Tundra right there. But um, yeah, so I'm not gonna be running AC, so it won't be um, burning fuel that way, but um, We'll see. I don't know how much the uh, having windows down affects like the overall um, wind resistance of the truck. I know that the truck's pretty terrible on aerodynamics uh, as is. So um, I feel like it won't affect it a ton because it's literally like just a floating brick going down the interstate. But I'm going to be running five over the speed limit, which in Arkansas is 75 miles an hour. And so in Oklahoma, I'm actually not sure. I wanna say it's 70, 75. Um, and then I'm gonna be going highway, which is, I believe it's a 60. Uh, and then through some little towns, but we won't hit very many stoplights. So it's gonna be mostly like highway and interstate driving. Um, but I, we'll see how it goes. Um, so far, the truck says it's averaging 14.4. Oh, and it just switched. Yeah, so it says I'm getting 298 miles to uh, to empty with the 0.7 miles on the trip. So let's say 299 miles is what it expects to get. And um, I believe I have a 21 gallon tank, but that might be until it says zero miles to empty. And you can usually go 20 to 30 miles past that. So I think it's a 26.4 gallon tank overall with that little extra reserve. Um, but let's look and see how many miles we have left on this trip. So we currently have 177 miles uh, to the park and we have 1.7 miles on the trip. So 178.8, I guess. Um, but let's see. So we should be more than fine to get there and potentially enough to get back. We'll see. Now I would consider this a fairly light load. I've just got like camera gear, thing of water and um, just a bag like a carry-on bag um, so overall we're not towing anything normally I've got a four-wheeler or something on this trip but I lent that to my buddy to go down to Carter's because um, we always end up needing a spare bike when we go uh, we we ride those things pretty rough but yeah, I think that we're gonna be fine uh, without it I didn't have the four-wheeler last year um, if I need to do anything I'll just take my truck um, but fairly light load, so shouldn't um, shouldn't have any difficulty getting at least 14 miles a gallon, at least is what the truck says. But with this way, we're gonna actually see truly how many miles to the gallon we are getting. never gotten that much for that long of a distance if I get 20 miles per gallon it's usually like coasting down a hill so um, 
maybe this trip won't be as expensive as I thought. Crossing our fingers, but I don't, I've got a base model truck, so I don't have any wood to knock on, but if there would, like, you know, but, um, yeah, so 16.4, we are now at 62.3 miles, um, not bad, temperature-wise, pretty day, 86 right now, a little warmer, but at least it's not raining and cold, last time we got here, it poured rain, um, it was cold one night, but, I mean, I think it's gonna be a really, really pretty weekend, uh, if you haven't ever made it out, this is, a uh, family that owns a farm down here and they basically just turn it into an off-road park once a year and they've got a big old Chevy uh they call it Cletus and that thing is like when I say this thing is built I mean this thing is a full-size mega truck that will skim across the water Yeah, so pretty day, truck's doing well, handling the drive well. Um, I do have, let's see, about 109, 108,000 miles on this thing. So she's broken in almost, she's getting there. But um, yeah, let you just keep going to the B-roll. She's screaming, <laughs> just holding 70 and just not happy about it. Just those past few miles, look how much I've dropped in gas mileage. All right, we're at 99.7 miles on this trip. I'll turn the volume down so I don't get copyrighted. But we were averaging 15.7. Um, so it's kind of continually gone down. Oklahoma's a lot more, you'd think it's really flat, but the area we're driving is a lot more hilly than uh, the part of Arkansas we were in. So definitely losing a bit of gas mileage to that. Uh, yeah, 100.1 miles means we're over halfway from where we started. Um, I got, according to this, 70 miles. Um, I'll check the actual GPS and see what we've actually got because I want to. I feel like we have a little bit less than that, maybe like 65, 60, 65 instead of 77. But. Um, yeah, I'll keep you up there. All right, so we do have 74 miles, so it's about three or four miles off. It's a little bit closer than I thought it'd be, honestly. But 15.7, 102 miles. We are currently in Clayton, Oklahoma. So um, making our way down to Bennington slowly but surely. We're a little over half the trip, and man, some pretty views out here for sure. Interesting little car in front of me. Let's see what that is. Is oh I cannot tell. It's not an international, I don't think. Yeah, older car. Love. I always love seeing those out there. Correct me on the pronunciation, but Studebaker. I don't know. I can't tell for sure. But yeah, definitely like an early, probably 70s, 60s truck. With the two, with the rounded, I may even be back in like the 50s. Yeah, definitely an older vehicle for sure. Love seeing that. We're gonna get to see the side view of them here in a second. change of plans we are going to be adding uh, one extra mile to our trip because I want to go to a gas station to see how much fuel I actually burned um, it is 13 miles currently to the NTR part and it is 14 miles to this gas station so um, just add one mile to everything so overall it'd be 189 100, 179 miles I believe um, I'll go back and make sure of that but, um, so let me show you our current statistics. Based on the truck, we have gone 161 and a half miles, averaging 15.3 miles per gallon. 
uh, 153 miles till empty and I'll get all these again once we get to the actual thing. Two hours and 42 minutes of run time and averaging 60 miles an hour. Um, ended up getting caught behind a couple big trucks that didn't feel like going anywhere near the speed limit. Uh, there were a couple points where we were going 40 and a 65, but there was a line of cars that didn't want to pass them, so I had to work my way through. Um, but yeah, I'm averaging 60 miles an hour and 15.3 still. So yeah, uh, that is what the truck thinks. We're going to get up here, uh, look at these numbers again, and then see what we're actually burning. There's the entrance to NTR right there. We're at 172.8 miles. So it's supposed to be 178 miles. So we are about 5.2 miles off-ish. Um, wow, that camera's really... But we're a little bit off uh, just with the extra tire size. Okay, it, I'm almost positive these trucks are calibrated to be at 30 inch tires. I believe that's just what a completely factory tire is. And of course we're running those, they're like, I don't remember what these are. They're about 34, 34 and a half inches tall. So we're gonna be going a little bit further per rotation than it believes we're actually going. So that's the difference uh, with that. And that kind of is one reason that we're gonna be getting a little bit different gas mileage than it expects. All right, we are pulling into this gas station. We're at 175 right. miles even. So not far past the, uh, not far past the actual um, NTR park. All right, now before I shut the truck off, I wanna check all of, um, just run through all the gauges again, see what we're at. So we have 15.3 miles per gallon, 177.5 on the trip, um, 142 till empty, two hours and 57 minutes, 59 average speed. So let's compare that to see uh, the distance we actually traveled, um, how much gas we actually burned, and um, as well as let's just see how much it's gonna cost to fill this thing up. Here, we're gonna start filling up. Dude, well, that's all he said, I guess. Uh, no receipt. Let's see. Yeah, let's fill this up. All right. See what we're at, not topping it off. 11.3 gallons, $44. That's not, not that bad, honestly. So, let's do the math here, real quick. All right, so our actual gas mileage there, if I went 179 miles, is 15.858. So, a little bit better than the truck thinks. Uh, the truck thinks I got. Um, 15.3 is that what we're at? Let's we'll stand up. 15.3. So we're actually getting half a mile per gallon better than it thinks. Um, so, I mean, it's not a lot, but it adds. But up. yeah, um, the trip to empty was very, very wrong. Um, I believe it said 150 till empty, and I went 180 miles. So it was like 20, 30 miles off. I'll do the actual math and throw it up here. Um, but so yeah, that wasn't close. Um, now it says I have 305 miles to empty. I guess with the new gas mileage, I'm, it expects me to go further. Um, uh, this dude's rolling behind me. Speed up a little bit. Um, but yeah, so it's about the kind of gas mileage, about 15.8. That's honestly really impressive. I don't think I've ever gotten that high gas mileage before, but, um, it's kind of what you get to expect uh, if you're looking at buying one of these lifted trucks and um, especially with Toyota they're known for not having just fantastic gas mileage but I had a buddy with a Silverado who averaged about 18 doing the same kind of stuff I did um, but he also kept that 18 a lot longer especially like towing uh, just with those extra gears that extra torque that he had a 6.2 and um, so but yeah about 15.8 is what I got on this trip down, 177 miles right now. And uh, that's kind of what you have to expect. Uh, hopefully this helps out. Um, makes your choice clear, whether it steers you toward Toyota or away from it. Um, I'm just here to give you what uh, 
basic facts I can come up with. So hope that helps you out.